Okay, uh, most recently we've been working with the while loop. Today I'm going to show you the for loop, which is kind of like a special case of the while loop. So we'll start by looking at a while loop. Uh, and the for loop is a special case of the while loop that's strictly for counter-based looping. So we'll look at how we would do counter-based looping, looping with a while loop first, and then I'll show you how we do it with a for loop. So I'm going to need a counter. I will... Uh, Start with that, so I'll declare an integer variable called i, and I will initialize it to zero. And then I'm going to start my while loop, so I'll say while, and I'm just going to count up to five, so zero to five, six things. Um, my while loop needs a condition, so my condition will be i is less than or equal to five. So I'm going to loop while i is less than or equal to 5. And then I will uh, do curly brackets to create a block. And all I'm going to do is just simply uh, print the value of i, and then increment i. And remember we... Uh, I'll close my block. Now, we recently learned this auto-increment operator, but I'll just remind you, that's the same thing as saying i is equal to i plus 1. So i plus plus is auto increment and it just adds 1 to i. Okay, so here uh, if we look at our while loop, all it's going to do is count from 0 to 5. It's going to print the value of i each time. Uh, but the important things to notice are we have three kind of key things going on. There's the creating the counter and initializing it, so int i equals 0. Then there's the, the condition of the, well, there's the while uh, <clears throat> keyword saying that I'm making a while loop. And then there's the condition. So I stay in that loop as long as that condition is true. And um, in the loop somewhere, I like to put it at the bottom. It's sort of traditionally where it is. The counter is incremented. So whatever that condition is, there should be something in the loop that changes it. Otherwise, the, the loop will go forever. And sometimes you want the loop to go forever, and when that's the case, you often just say, well, true. <clears throat> so let's uh, quickly build this and have a look at it. Okay, and there it is, and it does just exactly like we thought. Uh, I is 0, I is 1, I is 2, I is 3, I is 4, I is 5, and it's finished. Okay, so that is a while loop to count from 0 to 5. And the for loop is uh, really a, a specialized form of, the, of looping that's for doing just this, for uh, doing loops with counters. <clears throat> so I'll type out the for loop and show you. Uh, it starts with a for statement. Now the big difference here is the for statement itself has three clauses that correspond to those three key components. There's the first clause where I can initialize my counter, and I can also create it too. So I'm going to say int i to create an integer variable called i, and I'm going to initialize it to zero. A semicolon to end the first clause. The second clause is that condition statement. So just like the condition in the while loop, uh, i is less than or equal to 5, I write the condition here, i is less than or equal to 5, and I end that clause with a semicolon. And then the last clause, the third and final clause in the for loop, is the uh, incrementing of the counter. And so I'll type in i++ plus plus here. And now <clears throat> there's the, the body of the loop that's going to be executed, and I'm just going to do a print the same printf statement, and uh, let's build that and just see it, and then we'll talk about it a bit more. Okay, so there it is. The first, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is from my for loop, and the second, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, is from my while loop. So you can see in my for loop, I have uh, a section where I initialize, and in this case I create and initialize. All I have to do is initialize. 
uh, a counter variable. In the second section is a condition clause, and that's where I have my, my logical condition. And as long as that logical condition is true, I keep going around the loop. Just like in the while statement, as long as that logical condition is true, I keep looping. Uh, the third clause in the for statement is where I increment my counter. So I, I used i++. Plus plus. I could also have written i equals i plus 1 or i equals i plus 2 if I wanted to count by 2, um, etc. As a matter of fact, why don't we just for fun change both of these to count by 2's. Or I'll change the first one to count by 2's. So I'll say i is equal to i plus 2. And I'll change the while loop, and I guess I better get rid of the comment too, because I don't to count by threes. So I'll say i is equal to i plus three. And let's build. One. Let's line this up. So as I can see in the first one, my for loop, I have 0, 2, 4, and then the next one would be 6, which is greater than 5. Uh, so that's the end of my for loop. And in my while loop, I'm counting by 3, so I get 0 and 3, and the next one would be 6, which would be greater than. So uh, I showed you that because I wanted to show you that that um, third clause in the if statement doesn't have to be uh, the simple auto incrementer I++. It can be any equation that changes the counter in any way you want, any mathematical expression. Um, and that's how we use the for loop, and it really is just a very specialized while loop. Anything I do with the for loop, I can do with the while loop. Uh, it's just a convenient way of succinctly writing uh, a loop for a counter.